Thank you, Honorable House Chair. In looking at the uh, budget for minerals and energy, one should start with minerals uh, by noting that South Africa is regressing as a mining destination, where we are now at number 57 out of 62 preferred destinations. The main reasons given for that are uh, land claims, labor relations, organized crime, weak public services, including Transnet and ESCOM. Now, the transformat transformative again agenda is, uh, one can say, uh, idealistic in its uh, approach and in its objective. One can argue whether it works and whether it is a pragmatic policy to follow, but one should accept that there is a, a, a measure of trying to, to uh, undo what has happened in the past. But what about organized crime? What about weak government services? Those two are actually the results of government failure. And that, there is nothing to be said about that. No positive angle to take to, uh, to that problem. And if mining decreases, uh, we also mentioned that 1% uh, of the global exploration is done in South Africa at the moment. There is a, a pressure, the pressure mounts to export unbeneficiated or in a need to get foreign currency fast. Now let's leave minerals there and go over to energy. Uh, the Honorable Minister uh, made a distinction or a, let's say a, a division between development and environmental affairs. Now I think there's one thing that we should keep in mind and that is that non-renewable energy is those that are uh, based on the burning of fossilized hydrocarbons. Gas is also a fossilized hydrocarbon unless it is a uh, hydrogen gas which can be produced and which is therefore um, also renewable. The problem is, and that is actually not disputed, that in previous aeons the whole Earth, the whole globe, was not a nice place to live because of the lot of carbon in the air, in the atmosphere. And that, that was uh, progressively bound in uh, biological pro, uh, processes, and that, that is the base of present-day fossil fuels. And that anyone's aim should be to burn as little as possible of that. Now, if coal and uh, uh, oil should exit sooner or later, then it should be uh, uh, re replaced at least by something which could be nuclear, which does not uh, emit any uh, climate gases. And the, uh, the safety problem seems to be uh, somewhat solved, if one could, uh, could put it that way. The one problem that has not been solved is the cost of it. Then we have solar which is actually uh, has a lot of transformative uh, qualities to it in the sense that solar radiation is evenly, not exactly evenly, but more evenly distributed than say coal or oil over the globe. And that the possession of that, the ownership of that uh, could be why or is actually widely spread between households, businesses, community organizations and so forth which makes it much more uh, suitable for a transformative agenda, as well as for any community-based kind of uh, approach to development in South Africa and all over the world. Um, one could also look at hydrogen, which in sync with solar and with other technologies can be to the uh, benefit of South Africa as uh, platinum, the group, a platinum group of metals which is very important uh, in the production of hydrogen is also uh, a South African asset, which we can use. The fact is in the end that there are a lot of emerging technologies at the moment, new approaches to batteries, new approaches to uh, uh, energy harvesting, uh, as one does not actually uh, create energy or uh, produce it. The question is, whether the policy uh, that the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy uh, currently pursues is the correct policy 
And I think for that, there is a resounding no, because it does not work in the correct direction. I thank you.